Hey, happy Sunday uh, afternoon to all of you out there in social media land. This is Brother Dana coming to you from Chicago, but I don't know how long my prison system is or sentencing, but uh, obviously uh, they have not allowed me back on Facebook Live. So I'm working on some other things, but until that time, I'll communicate as much as I can to you through here, YouTube. Uh, I am going to start doing, um, I think it's going to be entitled just some talking and some videos of that, uh, the Willie Lynch Chronicles coming from the Lynch family, where I, um, want to go through these Willie Lynch letters and really point out things that you are already aware of, but to expose white America in how the Willie Lynch letters and the foundation of that is still very active in our social system in the United States here in every degree, on every political realm, uh, in every uh, social, you know, economic realm. So yes, you may be an Oprah Winfrey that's very wealthy, but even within that realm of wealth, she is still not treated equally. And so as I was going through just the greeting itself, you know, uh, things were coming out to me. But um, one thing, you know, I've been wondering is, you know, why is uh, Trump necessarily trying to get rid of all of our Mexicans and illegal immigrants who we know here in the United States uh, do a lot of, if not most, of the dirty work? Uh, you know, I, I have people in St. James, Minnesota that can't stand the Mexicans, but yet they rent apartments to them, uh, cash bases, so they don't have to turn the income in to the government because they're getting it from these low class in their mind Mexicans. And yet we degrade the Mexicans for what we call breaking the rules, but yet my very people are getting rent from these breaking rule Mexicans in cash so they don't have to turn it over to the government to file it as income. See, and my white Americans want to keep thinking that we are so righteous and they're like the Pharisees. And I'm telling you because I know you see it and I'm going to acknowledge it. So as I'm reading through this, I'm like, you know, why again does Trump want to get rid of all these illegal immigrants that we know are doing the dirty work. And we've already heard things about California and the picking of the fruit and all of that stuff. But as I was reading through just the greeting um, here, uh, Willie Lynch, and I'm going to go into this deeper at other times, but he said, you are not only losing valuable stock by hangings, you are having uprisings. Slaves are running away. Your crops are sometimes left in the field too long for maximum profit. Well, see, by getting rid of all these illegal immigrants who are taking the job of the slave, we are going to replace these illegal immigrants with the people that should be doing it in the first place, which are who we took to this country as slaves, which are you, my black brothers and sisters, but now I know as the chosen of the Most High, the true Hebrews. That's the plan because we need to really put you back in position where you are working for us for maximum profit. That's right now we have the correctional system. That's where we are getting maximum profit or the modern day cotton field from the slaves. But why not take you and instead of just having you sit and rot in these prisons, that if we get rid of these illegal immigrants that we see also as our predators, we can then make these prisons where our black brothers and sisters are just being lazy. We'll get them to go out there and work those fields. We'll put them in deeper bondage. And that is exactly what Pharaoh did in the process and in the time when Moses was declaring to Pharaoh to let my people go 
when he then caused your ancestors to work even harder, putting you back into a submissive position, making you understand, dang it, you are the slave, we are the master. Now get back into place. That's the reason why Trump and the white evangelicals are really getting rid of Mexicans and, and illegal immigrants such as those individuals and those that are lumped into that category because we need to put the people that we brought to this nation into those positions in the fields under our jurisdiction. Those were the Africans that we brought here the original Hebrews, the chosen people of the Most High. But this time, be encouraged because I want you to know this is not for your continued oppression. But this is the darkest hour before your freedom is given to you. Um, and it won't be given to you by us. It will be given to you by the Most High. But the hardships and the, all of the, you know, plights and, and, and uh, curses that fell upon the Egyptians are, is about to hit America, white America, those who refuse, those who refuse to accept, acknowledge, repent by repaying the true Jews. Hebrews. And the reason why I said Jews is because my white Americans honor Jews and will give money for Jews for Jesus to convert them. Now I wonder if they'll have that same love and devotion to the true people of the Most High now that you are black, now that you are the slave, now that you are the second class, not even citizen, but um, like an animal, we own you, your property. And we're clearing the fields from the immigrants so that our property can take its rightful place instead of sitting in our prison systems doing nothing. Now we're going to make you pick the, that fruit, walk those fields, and become the slave that you forgot that you were and are. So anyways, this is uh, Brother Dana at least giving a little um, hi out there to you. Um, until I get off Facebook Live. Uh, but I know that time is coming. Anyway, I have some people that have been asking me about One Love t-shirts. And I got some One Love t-shirts in. Uh, if you can see, that is the front. And um, this is the back. Uh, this is purple. I also have white. And then I also have black. Uh, they're not really a t-shirt, but they're made more out of that jersey material. Anyway, um, everything that I do, I do with my youth and in my mentoring programs, you know, is funded by myself, which is my, you know, 10 to 4 job. But uh, uh, myself, we're, we're selling these t-shirts. So if you would like to buy a t-shirt for $28, $25, um, it's on my webpage. I'm telling you, I pay almost $18 the shirt and I'm not here to be dishonest and that my motives um, for why I do what I do become financial driven. No, they're passionately driven for the people that I love. But um, if, if you are interested in a t-shirt, go ahead and place an order. Um, the few dollars extra that uh, comes from that t-shirt goes right into my mentoring programs and I'm traveling down to, um, to Jacksonville, Florida uh, in June, asked to come down and speak at a Hebrew conference. And, you know, the finances are not there to pay me. And so I have no, uh, you know, hesitation that I'll save up what I have to do. But I know I've got some followers and I know some of you, um, I do believe you trust my heart. But um, grab yourself a T-shirt. Uh, go to my webpage. I'll get them sent out to you. And the, the unique thing about that is these T-shirts and Everything that you see on them came, is coming from a, a brother of ours, a Hebrew brother now down in Texas. And you'll see him on my web page. Uh, all he wants to do is build up his printing business so that he can employ some of these young men that our society has wrongfully and too longfully put into our prison systems to help run his company. 
And so not only does this support one love, but it also goes back and supports this young man down in Texas that's trying to build uh, a, a business that will be kingdom focused. And so I use this young man and we have be, we've developed a relationship over the last couple of years. I've never met him yet, but, but he'll call me up and just be like, hey, Brother Dana, how you doing? And that's, that is the unity that I really declare upon us as, and I'm grafted in, and I'm going to, I'm going to boldly take my place as a grafted in brother to, of, to the, my brothers and sisters in the Hebrew faith. And I'm professing that actually as well. Uh, I went into a, an African store and uh, the lady asked, you know, where are you from? And then she said, are you a pastor? And I said, well, no, but I'm a believer now in as my faith in my Hebrew belief. So, and I said, I'm learning that. She gave me a great big hug. She is from West Africa, Ghana. But anyway, to bring us together and uh, unity is what I believe the Most High is really calling us to do because I know with my people, um, as you see with the following Trump, they will give up every moral standard they have to unify on the two uh, main principles of their faith. And that is control. And that is privilege, which in turn translates to their fear of giving up white privilege, white control to the people we hate the most, which are our black brothers and sisters here in Africa and across the world, because you are slaves and you're second class citizens. So we fear losing our white privilege and control, our status by the people we hate the most. And we know that the two things furthest from being able to be in connection with the Most High, even their own God of Christianity, is fear and hate. Hate is the opposite of love and fear is the opposite of faith. So my white evangelicals are operating now in fear of what they hate. And that is why they cannot see. They have been completely blinded because the Most High will be calling them unto repentance. But because of that fear and hate, they will miss everything of the, of the Most High and His voice and the way He speaks through even His prophets. In these next days, such as myself, I don't call myself a prophet, but I will call myself a prophet in the natural realm that I'm supposed to go back to my white Gentiles in the days and years to come to, to preach and to teach and to profess the truth of what I know of my black brothers and sisters and who you are as my Hebrews, the true Hebrews, the, the chosen of the Most High. So anyway, I got off on a tangent there again, but that is my passion. And uh, when we come together as white people, as you see, we forget all those other things to guard those two things, white privilege and control from the people we hate. We'll let go of other things. And, and I am not one to say what is important in, in the Hebrew nation uh, with, you know, calling the most high certain names and stuff. I, I'm not learned there all yet of the differences and the reasons for those differences. But I'll tell you this, unity is powerful. I see it and I know it because my people do it when they must, as you see now. And so encouragement to you all. Again, feel free to hit me up on my um, you know, website, uh, www.onelovesociety.love. Again, this is Brother Dana. Thank you for tuning in and be encouraged again to know that your season of oppression and your season of the hardship that you, have, uh, you and your ancestors have faced for 400 years is about to come to an end. The signs are speaking all over the place. Bless you. Shalom.